After a summer filled with soccer between the Euros and Copa America, these talented players return to their clubs in the hunt for glory, both domestic and abroad. Players for the best of the best get to face off against each other. This is the Champions League. Welcome to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Massimo Manfra, joined alongside by Owen Cameros and Massimo Bonagorio. With the Champions League kicking off last Tuesday, we've gotten to see all 36 teams on the pitch dueling out for European dominance. Now on that note, Owen, who do you believe the hype is too much for? And who is your disappointment this season? So which teams won two of the last three Champions Leagues? Which team has Don Carlo, Carlo Ancelotti as their manager? It's Real Madrid. And the thing is, Real Madrid, best team on paper. Everybody knows it. Kylian Mbappe, Vinicius Jr., Jude Bellingham. Probably the most talented roster we've seen since maybe the prime Ronaldo days, 2015-2016. The thing is, it might honestly be too much of a good thing. Vinicius Jr., Jude Bellingham, you know, Rodrigo when he's up there, and then obviously Kylian Mbappe, all players that demand the ball, want the ball, love to play positionless football. And you look at Kylian Mbappe, there's a reason he's never won the Champions League before. It's because he's so, such an individual player that just wants the ball at his feet, wants personal glory, that sometimes it can actually be to the detriment of his team, Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid, the fact of the matter is with them, their hype is so high that it's win or a failure of a season for the Madridistas. And Real Madrid and, and their team, it's built for success. They're a very, very well-coached team. Carlo Ancelotti has probably the best European pedigree outside of maybe a Pep Guardiola that we've seen that's still currently coaching. But the thing with them is you can't win soccer playing 11v8. Rodrigo, not a big defender, doesn't like to track back. Kylian Mbappe, literally, like Neymar hated playing with him because he would never track back. He wanted the ball, he would stay up top, and he was an individual player. And I think when Real Madrid comes against teams like maybe a Manchester City, maybe a Bayern Munich that I know we really like and are really high with, I think they're going to struggle because I just think they're such an attack-minded team that they're going to leave their backline stranded, their midfielders stranded. We've seen, I mean, they've lost players. They lost Cruz, Modric, players like that that are really kind of the heart and soul of this team and players that really have done a lot in the Champions League and have that pedigree. So I think with Real Madrid this year, they're going to breeze through in, in the group stages and, and you know in the, in the league format that we see because obviously it's a new Champions League format with league instead of group stages. But I think when it comes to the knockout stage, they're going to play a team like a Manchester City, like a Bayern Munich that I think is just more well-rounded and I think Real Madrid might struggle. Yeah, I'm going to have to go the other Spanish giant. I'm going to have to go Barcelona. You know, they just lost Ter Stegen, their goalie, and to a knee injury, he's going to be out for the whole season pretty much. And it's just... And Naki Pena, their backup goalie, he's not that good. He gives up too many goals, and Lewandowski's aging, and they have to rely on Lamine Mal, who's only 17, and he has schoolwork to do. And he that's just too much of a reliance on Lamine Mal. And they had a not good, terrible performance against Monaco. And Monaco, you know, going into the game, Barcelona undefeated on the season, 5-0, and and it's just on, you know, Monaco had a record of, in French football that they probably didn't want, and that's just they were winless in 14 straight games, and they haven't been in the Champions League for five years. And you know, but Barcelona struggled. They had a red card in just the first 10 minutes, and it's just they didn't come back from that. I mean, they Luminium all tied it 1-1, but you know, Eleni Kenna scoring in the 71st minute put them to bed, and it just wasn't enough for them. Let me ask you this: If Kaylor Navas, who's been talks about him, Coming out of retirement and going to Barcelona, if he comes in and leads that team, do you think they have any better chance? A slight better chance. Definitely better than Naki Pena. I know he's in retirement. You know, he's going to have to get some training. But I think just still, you know, they rely too much. And Lamine Mal, he can't do it all. And Lewandowski, he's getting old. And Danny Olmo just got injured. And that's a huge player for them. And I just don't think that Barcelona. I think they'll get out of the new format. But when they get to the knockouts, I don't think they'll get do you not think that that's a slight overreaction considering they played Monaco very close for over 80 minutes while down to 10 men? I don't think it's an overreaction, especially since, you know, they've not performed very well. The last time they made a final was when they won it in 2015. And the last time they made a semifinal was when they lost to Liverpool at Anfield 4-0. And I just don't think it's an overreaction. I just don't think that, you know, they have Bayern who... We know they're going to lose to because Bayern always beats them in the Champions League. Their schedule is pretty light, you know, besides Bayern, but still, I don't think it's an overreaction, and especially with, you know, Ter Stegen being out. And even if they do get Kaylor Navas, you know, 
They have a really old team, and they rely on their youngster who's only 17 too much, and I just don't think it's an overreaction. That's an interesting take about Barcelona. Now that we know you guys' disappointment picks, who do you guys think are the dark horse teams? Who will take Europe by storm? I think a true dark horse is going to be Sporting Lisbon. I mean, they had a very good performance against Lille, uh, two nothing. You know, Victor Jokeres, who's in his prime, he's one of the best strikers in the world. He's got a goal, and Devast, who had an absolute screamer, probably goal of the tournament already. Such a rocket from outside the box, and Victor Jokeres. I mean, I don't understand how he didn't get signed over this transfer window, and he's only rank, he's only sixty six mil. If he had Inyo at the last, as his last name, he would probably be worth 200 mil. And I just don't understand how nobody signed him. But, you know, they're going to take advantage of him. And he is just so good. He's already got 14 goals for club and country this season already. And, you know, they're undefeated in league play. And I think they're just going to take that momentum in the league play. And they're just going to continue to perform and take that performance into the Champions League. And I think that could be a true dark horse this year. You know, I like Lisbon. I, I mean, they're a very good team. One of the best teams we've seen come out of the Portuguese league in a while. I just think the issue with Lisbon is they just don't have the transfer budget that a lot of these Premier League and La Liga teams do and teams like Bayern. So I could see it. I could see them making a run, but I don't think they're going to go to the finals. My team is a team that we've seen in the finals many a times. Well, it's Inter Milan. Inter Milan just a couple of years ago nearly beat Manchester City. If Lukaku hadn't decided to play goalkeeper for a second half, then very well could have upset the uh, English giants that we know and love. Thing with Inter Milan, one of the best spines. Summer, incredible keeper, has done it before. He's been with Bayern, he's been with teams like that. And then Bastoni, Barea, Latara Martinez up top. All three just absolute dominant players in their own right. And I really trust that spine. And that's what I think the important thing is in European football is having a really good spine that can take you Places And I think the other thing with Inter, a lot of the times we've seen them get tough groups recently. Now with this league format, they're going to have a chance to show their stuff and play more games and have a better showing than I think they've had in group stages in the past. And then the other thing is just, for some reason, Inter Milan does really well against European Giants. I don't know the reason. I'm very, very confusing because they're not exactly on the same pedigree as a team like Bayern or Manchester City, but they perform really well against Man City. And if they can continue the performance that we've seen in the group stage, that 0-0 draw to City was quite good. I think that they can go pretty far away. I think those are two great picks, but I would also like to add the possibility of Atletico Madrid being a dark horse with two litmus tests coming up against PSG and Leverkusen. There's a good chance that they could make it through and then once they catch heat because they have a combination of the old guard with Jimenez and Griezmann, but they also have youngsters like Sorloth up top who can energize them and really push them forward. But now I'm glad you mentioned Inter because let's talk possible champions. I think that Inter with Jan Sommer and his 80% save percentage could possibly propel them further than we've seen and become the champions of Europe. Who do you guys think? I mean, I'm going to go back to the team that beat it, and I'm going to go to Manchester City. Rodri, huge loss. Yes, he's out for the season with an ACL injury. I like Rodri. I think he's a great player. I think he makes the team better, but I need three names. I need Pep Guardiola. I need, Erling, I need Erling Holland. I need Kevin De Bruyne. That's pretty much my explanation. Look, they've done it before. 2022, it was kind of the situation. 2022 into 2023 it was the situation of never had made it to the finals before and won. And now that they have, it's kind of a situation of, look, we've been here before, we've done it, let's do it again. So I think Manchester City, the team that's going to win. Man City's a great pick, but I'm going to have to go Bayern Munich. I got three words, home field advantage. If they do make the final, they'll have, it's in Munich, Allianz Arena. They will, you know, Harry Kane scoring goals. They just had a record nine goals in the Champions League. He's now the top goal scorer in Europe as an Englishman. And I just think, you know, Bayern is the staple pick, you know. They have an easy schedule. Obviously, they don't play many good teams in the group stage. And, and Barcelona, the best team they play. Yeah, and Barcelona is not that good this year. And I just think that they're just going to blow through everybody. I think those are some very interesting picks. And that is why it's going to be a very interesting tournament in this new format. I'm excited to see a new spin on an already great competition. If you want to stay with our coverage of the Champions League and many other sports, follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For Owen Camaros and Massimo Bonagorio, I'm Massimo Manfra. Thanks for watching and have a good night. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. We hope you liked that segment. And we're sure there's other Penn State Sports Night segments that you are going to love as well. 
Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And check us out on social media for updates and behind the scenes clips and pics. Follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all of us here at the Belisari Media Center, we are Penn State Sports Night.